Hello, welcome to Elemental Yarn. This is going to be our media platform for discussing all things gaming, writing, storytelling, etc. In this video, I wanted to talk about character objectives. Now, whenever I sit down to write, I always battle with this one aspect of storytelling. And that's because, in my opinion, it's the most difficult to pull off. That is, what they will be trying to accomplish throughout most of your story. It sounds deceptively simple. Your character needs to have something they are trying to do in spite of obstacles, and they will ultimately fail or succeed. Now, the problem is the objective has to be something that is not easily achievable, right? If their objective is to go down the street and buy a hot dog, that's the end of it. They could, what's stopping them, right? It's not very compelling unless there are obstacles and unless the task itself is very difficult. The other thing is that it needs to be an objective that the audience is invested in the character achieving. It needs to be something that me watching or reading or consuming this media, I want a certain outcome or I'm worried about what the outcome might be. In either case, I'm invested. And I think the third main thing that you need in a character objective is you need that objective, that primary goal, it needs to be something that you can grab onto. It needs to be something you can recognize. You know when you've done it. So for example, if you had a character objective to le live a happy life, when do you know that they've achieved that? Unless there's something else that signifies them le living a happy life. If it's to marry the prince or princess then that's something you can grab onto. Okay, well then at that point we know live happily ever after. But if it's just generic, it's just a, a loose idea like, oh, I want to be a better person. How do we know when the characters accomplish that in the story? Unless there's something tactile, unless there's something specific that they're trying to do and we know when they've done that thing. So those are the three things you need for an objective. Actually, I'm gonna do three like this. Three, three, I like, I kind of like this three. I don't know. No, wait, one, two, yeah, three. Anyway, so it needs to be something achievable but difficult. It needs to be something the audience is invested in and it needs to be something specific and recognizable. Frequently, I go to write or outline and I find that I don't have a good solid character objective to carry the story and I, got very frustrated the other day and realized, well, hell, I'll just make a resource that I can use so that I have something to look at and then shuffle through and figure, okay, well, which one of these? Oh, here's a good objective. So I made some cards. Primarily, this is, this is how I do things, is I, I get frustrated when there's not a resource that I want to use, so I make it myself. And then if anyone else wants to use it, Awesome, great, I've contributed. But if nothing else, it's valuable for me. So that's, that's uh, make no mistake, this is primarily a selfish endeavor and I'm only sharing with everyone else from the benevolence and kindness of my golden heart. So these objective cards, they essentially, all they are is it is a name of the objective such as defeat the enemy, followed by a brief description of what the character must do and a little bit about how they would go about doing that. And then underneath that, I've got a list of obstacles. And these are mostly just like phrase length prompts. It's not a blueprint, right? It's not gonna tell you exactly how to do it. It's more of a prompt. And then lastly is the endings. Just like, a, again, just a couple of like phrase length prompts about how the story could potentially end. The other main challenge with this is I need to figure out how to distill every possible character objective that you can write into a short list. So I think I'm getting there. I don't think it's perfect, not even close, but I've come up with a list of 15 objectives. And one of them is kind of a catch all for anything that doesn't fit in the other categories. And that's just called accomplished greatness, whatever that may be. If that means winning the spelling bee, or if that means building a really cool rocket, you know, that's, that's like the catch all for anything that's not one of the other 14. So how do you use these objectives? Well, in my mind, there's three different ways you can apply them. Everything's in threes, that's lovely. Three is a very important number. Three. So the first use is the main use, in my mind. And that is your main character's primary objective. That will supply the main tension for your story. 
Now, when I say main character, that could be a group character. It could be the football team. It could be two characters in a buddy cop thing. It doesn't matter. Your main character, that's that's my that's my keyword for the main driving force in the story that the audience is most invested in. So that means if, if that's your primary objective, that means it'll be set up in the first act. Sorry, three act structure. If you're unfamiliar with that, I'll make a video on that. So it'll be set up in the first act, in the beginning of your story. We'll find out what is happening and what the character needs to do. And by the end of the first act, we know exactly what they need to do. They make a plan and they set forth to accomplish it. And then in the second act, they try to accomplish their objective and they try and fail, try, fail, try, fail until they ultimately either succeed or fail, usually fail, actually. And then in the third act, there's a twist on that main objective or a new objective. And that leads us into the conclusion and the climax and all that stuff. And then the story ends. So the second way you could potentially use these objectives is by applying it to your final objective. That is the objective that takes place during the third act of your story. Why can't I think of a single goddamn example whenever I talk? Oh, uh, let's think about a movie that everybody's seen. Shrek. Let's talk about Shrek. In Shrek, the titular character wants to live alone in peace in his swamp. Shrek wants to be alone. That's his primary objective. He just wants everyone to get out of his life. In the first act, he, we see the status quo. We see how he's living his life. And then we see an intrusion on his status quo as all these fairy tale creatures come in and invade his home. So Shrek goes to Lord Farquaad and demands that all these creatures leave his swamp. And Farquaad gives him a quest. So now we have his primary objective. Shrek needs to rescue this princess for Lord Farquaad so that everyone can get off his land throughout the entire second act. That's what he's trying to do. But as that goes on, we start to see, oh, hold on. He actually likes this princess and she likes him. So maybe his objective is changing. He sends Princess Fiona to Lord Farquaad and goes to live alone. But even though that's what he was trying to do and he succeeded, it's not a happy ending yet because at this point, He's grown fond of Princess Fiona and realizes he no longer wants to be totally alone. When Donkey comes and says that Fiona also loved him, his objective is no longer to be alone. He, he is alone. He's, a, he's accomplished his objective. The story should be over, but it's not because he has a final objective, and that is to marry the princess. So that's another way you can use these objective cards is to use one of them as the final objective, the third act objective. Um, even a lot of the endings for my objective cards lead into a different objective card. So for example, I think several of them I have, one of the potential endings for it is it leads into defeat the enemy. Because that's how a lot of stories end anyway, is they start out a certain way and someone's trying to unravel a mystery or they're trying to rescue some people or something. And then it ultimately becomes defeat the enemy because their plan failed and now all that's left to them is to just win. The third way that you can use a, an objective is to use it for a subplot objective. I wonder how many times I've said the word objective in this video. So a subplot objective has something to do with the main objective. It's either parallel to it, or it reinforces the main objective, or it acts against it. In any case, it's directly related to the main objective. It's, if, it's, if it's something totally separate, then it doesn't belong, and it's part of a different story. Let's go back to Shrek, why not? Uh, Donkey is a subplot with Dragon. It's only got a few scenes, but that's all we need. For Donkey's subplot, I guess act one would be meeting the dragon and being terrified, but then ultimately realizing that he likes dragon. Act two is finding dragon and they get together and they win. Yay. But then act three is realizing that Donkey also wants to help Shrek. So he and dragon work together to do that, to help Shrek accomplish his goal. And the interesting thing about that objective is it's also find love which is Shrek's final objective. So you can see how it is very related to the main objective and strengthens it and reinforces it and pushes us closer to the conclusion of the story. And that's what a proper subplot should do. So my hope is that these cards will be useful to somebody out there. If not, I'll be using them. I'll be adding to them. I'm not sure how many there will be ultimately. For right now, I've got ideas for 15 of them. I'll probably add to that whenever I come across an objective or a story that I'm like, oh, okay, that one doesn't fit in any of the existing ones, I'll add more. But in theory, there shouldn't be too, too many because a lot of them are sort of broad. They encompass a lot of different kinds of story. My hope is that you can take one of these cards and you can look at it and be like, okay, I wanna tell a story about a character trying to do this. 
and then you can look at the steps they need to take to do it, and you can look at some of the obstacles, and that'll generate ideas in your brain, and then you can look at the endings and think, well, that'd be cool, and then you can kind of put those pieces together and then fill in all the gaps and write a really cool story and then make millions and tell everyone that Elemental Yarn sent you. Let's go with that. Well, thank you very much for watching this very rambling, meandering kind of video essay video. Uh, thank you so much for staying, if you did, and go ahead and drop a like and all that stuff. This is among the first of my videos of the channel and the whole project as a whole. The whole project as a whole, there we go, That that's good English, right? Um, but hopefully you enjoyed it, hopefully you'll share it with people who might also get a kick out of it, hopefully you'll find it useful, and I don't know how to sign off videos yet. This has been Elemental Yarn, thanks for stopping by. No, I don't want to say that. God, I'm almost out of time. I have 30 seconds left. You know, with a good outro. Oh, God, the pressure. I guess that's all I had. <laughs> Video's ending in 10 seconds. Well, too late now. There's no going back. That's how the video ended. I'm not doing a second recording. Well, thanks so much in the secret to immortal life. It oh, God, I just remembered. You're still watching. That's that's kind of fun. I can I can do. OK, I kind of like that idea. I can talk over here for the full half hour that I record, and then when I'm all done, I look over here to say goodbye. That's kind of fun. All right. I dig it. I will be making more of these videos talking about all aspects of writing and storytelling. There'll be other kinds of content too. If this is too dry for you, if you want something more exciting and entertaining, I will be doing other kinds of things as well. I'll be talking about video games and board games and role-playing games. I've got all kinds of stuff on my shelf over here, as you can see, that I can talk about. Yeah, I'll come at you with some new kinds of content as we go along. This is still largely experimental, so you know, who knows what'll happen. You can find the objective cards that I've released so far in the description below. You can find Elemental Yarn content on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Just type Elemental Yarn and you'll probably find it. But I'll also have links to all my social medias in the description as we try and figure out how social media works. Thanks so much. I'll see you in the next video.